in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the magic formula in knitting. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm happy to have you here. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. So there are magic formulas in almost every um, uh, career out there uh, and, and craft and what and whatnot, but knitting has a magic formula, and it is used to calculate shaping rates for our knitting. This can apply to sleeve increases, decreases, whether you're working from the cuff up or the sleeve cap down. This can also be used for waist shaping or anywhere you are needing to um, evenly increase or decrease along a vertical line in your knitting. There are kind of two magic formulas floating out there, but they're really the same magic formula. One is just a more simplified version than the more complicated version. But it's really just simple algebra. If you can plug numbers into an equation and use a calculator, then you can do this math. So let's say we have a sleeve and our total number of stitches at the um, upper arm of the sleeve is 280, and our total number of stitches at the cuff is 120, and we have 210 rows or rounds in the sleeve length for our desired sleeve length. So first we need to take 280 minus 120, and that's 160. So that's our change in stitch count. Um, and for a sleeve, we work two increases or decreases per row or round. So we need to divide that in half. So we'll divide 160 in half, and that is 80. So we have 80 sets of increases to work for this sleeve if we're working from the cuff to the upper arm. And we have 210 rows in which to work those in. So we now take 210 divided by 80 and we get 2.625. Well, we don't really need to care. We don't really care about this 0.625. We just know we have two. And so what we do is we take two and we add one to it to get three. So we're going to be working with two rounds and three rounds. So every there's going to be a set of increases made every second round and a set of increases made every third round. But now we need to find out how many times we work every second round and how many times we work every third round. To do that, we take 80 times 2 and subtract it from 2, 10, and find our remainder. So this number, 50, is the number of times we will work every third round, and then to find how many times we work every second round, we take 80 minus 50, which is 30. So every second round, we will work 30 times. And we can check our work and make sure that 50 plus 30 is 80, and it is. So that's our number of increases. And then we can check to make sure we have 210 rows when we work this by taking 3 times 50, which is 150, and 2 times 30, which is 60, and adding those together to get 210. So we can work every second round 30 times and then every third round 50 times. Now you can work the faster rate first 
which is usually what is worked in a sleeve. You work the faster rate working up to the elbow and then work the slower rate up to the upper arm. Or you can mix these if you want more of a straight line. You can work every second round and then every third round. Um, uh, that tends to get a little more complicated when writing patterns, but that is totally doable and you would get a more straight line increase along this increase line. But this presumes that you want um, or are able or want to work an odd and an even number of rounds. When you're working in the round, this is doable. When you're working flat, usually you want to make an increase on every right side row. So both of these numbers really need to be an even number. So using this more simplified magic formula method doesn't work if you want to force your increases into a particular pattern, whether it's on every right side row so that you need all even numbers, or if you want your increases to be made to fit your stitch pattern row count. So say you want to be able to work them every sixth row and every eighth row or every second row and every sixth row, something like that. Well, then we need to use the more complicated magic formula where the algebra is, is spelled out and we have all of our variables that we can plug into the formula. In essence, this is the same idea, only simplified. So let me clear my board and we'll start over showing you the full magic formula. All right, if we stick with the same numbers, and but this time we say we're working flat, so we want to force the increases to every, to be on right side rows. We're still working with 80, total increases and 210 total rows. What we need to do for this is we need to make um, our basically two algebraic formulas that we combine into one. Um, it's a polynomial equation of with multiple unknowns and we have uh, this one we have we will have two equations and they can be combined in order to find our unknowns. So what we have are our total rows. So we can call this T. These are our knowns. Our sh total shaping um, rounds or rows is S and we know this. What we need to find out though is our, um, our higher number of shaping rounds and our lower number of shaping rounds. And then the total number of times at the lower number and the total number of times at the higher number. So H is our higher rate, L is our lower rate, Y is the number of times we will increase at H and X is the number of times we will increase at L. And H must always be higher than L for this to work. So let's, let's spell out our, um, our algebraic equation. Okay, there are two equations then that we can combine to find all of our unknowns. The first one is that y plus x or x plus y is going to equal s, right? Our total number of times that we increase at the lower rate and our total number of times that we increase at the higher rate should equal our total number of times that we want to increase. So that's equation number one. We can rewrite this to solve for x using basic algebra by subtracting y from both sides. So x equals s minus y. We still don't know x or y yet, but that's fine. We will find it in just a little bit. 
The other equation is that the total number of times we increase at the lower rate plus the total number of times we increase at the higher rate is going to equal our total number of rows. So if, say, we are increasing uh, three times every fourth row, that's 12, and then um, two times every sixth row, that's 12. 12 plus 12 is 24. In that example, our total number of rows would be 24. Hopefully I didn't just confuse you, but it should make sense in just a second. What we need to do then is solve for um, our y in this equation. And to do that, you take the x term here that includes y and you plug it in here. So instead of x here, we will put s minus y. L. So this is this is your basic algebra right. equals t. Now we need to isolate y. So first I need to multiply out the L SL minus YL plus YH equals T. So we can um, subtract the SL from both sides. So we end up with minus YL plus YH equals T minus SL. And then we can get our Y out of these two terms. And I'll rearrange it so we're subtracting we don't have a negative at the front, so it will be y times h minus l equals t minus s l. And then I'm, get, I'm running out of room down here, but now we divide by h minus l on both sides, which gets us y equals t minus s l divided by h minus L. So that's our Y, and we know our X will be S minus Y. So let me write these two equations over here. X equals S minus Y. Y equals T minus SL divided by H minus L. And I'll erase all of this over here so we can work. Knowing these two equations and our numbers, T210 and S80, let's say we want to work every increase on right side rows. So we want to work them every second row and every fourth row. So 4 is the higher number, so 4 will be my h, and 2 is the lower number, so 2 will be my l. And now I can plug everything in. So we'll start with the more complicated one, y. y equals, so 210 is our t, minus 80 is our s, times 2 is our l divided by, the higher number is 4, the lower number is 2. This equals 25. Y is the number increasing at the higher number, X is the number increasing at the lower number, so we will increase 25 times every fourth row. Now we need to find how many times we will increase every second row, and so that is X equals S minus Y, S is 80, Y we just figured out here is 25, oops, minus, minus 25 is 55. So we'll increase every second row 25 times 
or no, 55 times. Fifty-five times, and every fourth row, twenty-five times. If we can check our work by saying four times twenty-five is one hundred, two times fifty-five is one ten, one hundred plus one ten is two ten, so that works. So here we have the equation spelled out then. H is the high rate that you want to increase or decrease at. L is the low rate you want to increase or decrease at. T is your total number of rows. S is the number of increase or decrease rows. Remember to divide this by two if you're working two increases in every row. Y then is the number of times we increase or decrease at the high rate. X is the number of times we increase or decrease at the low rate. Now, make sure if you want to have a section of your sleeve or whatever you're increase decreasing, at the end here, where you don't work an increase or a decrease, so you want to have a section of straight knitting, make sure you subtract those number of rows from your total rows here, because the total rows is going to result in that number of rows with an increase being worked on the very last row. So usually when you're designing knitwear, you want to have a buffer in here in case knitters uh, row gauge doesn't exactly match your row gauge, so you can subtract an inch worth of rows from the total number of rows to get you the length of the sleeve that you want, and then that's the T that you're working with to then find these rates and the number of times. I know this is a lot of math and algebra, but hopefully this is helpful for you to see how to calculate your own sleeve shaping rates or your own waist shaping rates. Let me know if this was helpful or if I just managed to confuse you even more. Um, do let me know in the comments below what you think about this. I hope this was helpful though. Please like and subscribe and comment. And thank you so much for watching.